Hey friends, this is Coerce and Current and the other day I cut open this USB 4 cable to take a look at the wiring inside and some people ask me why I always use this dedicated USB-C cable tester instead of one of the universal cable and charger testers that are floating around. And to be honest, I do have a bunch of them, so if we take a look, I not only have a dedicated cable tester, but I also have one of the PowerC universal testers and more than one of the FNERC testers that come in different kinds and flavors to, to test cables. And there is quite an easy reason for that, and I'm going to show you in a second. Let's start with the FNERC type tester and take a look at the cable that I've only soldered together, I think, the VBUS connection for. And all of the testers can test cables in some way. This tester, for example, has a toolbox which can detect USB-C E markers, so it can detect what's inside the cable, theoretically. And if we connect it, then it doesn't tell us anything. So even though there is an e-marker inside and I've tested the cable, it, it still is working due to the fact that the e-marker itself is not in the cable but in the connector, so either in, in this or this end or both of them in some, some circumstances. The tester tells us no, it, it can't find any kind of e-marker. It, it, it still says finding and no matter what orientation I plug in this cable, it, it doesn't, doesn't show. And with one of the other types of of universal testers, these power C ones, and this one is an, let me take a look, KM003C. We can do similar things if we boot it up and take a look at it. We can choose modules USB-C e marker, and again, it can detect the, the e marker chip inside the cable. And if we connect it like this, it detects it perfectly well as a passive Thunderbolt 4 cable, interestingly enough, with a Wender ID, and it advertises itself as a 240 watts cable, extended power range, at a latency of 10 to 20 nanoseconds, and 40 gigabits per second data transmission speed. And this is all fine and well, and it should theoretically uh, suffer if you just want to test the cable. But in our case, it, it definitely won't transmit data anymore. The, ca the cable is not capable of transmitting data, and the cable is also not capable of transmitting anything useful anymore, to be honest. So we may be able to, to get some power over it if, if we have some ground or at least some groundish connection and, and the VBUS connection, but we definitely won't be able to see any kind of data going over it, and definitely no. 240 watts extended power range because the communication will, will not work through the two cable ends. And that's actually the reason um, I'm, I'm using this dedicated cable tester because it is specifically made for things like broken cables and it doesn't have to be as broken as this one. It, it's enough if, if you've bent it around the sharp corner once and one of the cables snapped inside or you have a short between the wrong two pins inside the cable, that's enough for the cable to stop working properly. It may still work in, in some configuration, it may still display something, it, it may still pop up on your computer as, a, as something being detected, but it won't properly work. I think you cannot use the full power range, you cannot full use the full data transmission speeds or something else will behave weirdly. And that's why I, I actually am using this, this kind of tester. And I've tested this earlier and that's why I know which direction to use. And the tester itself tells me, okay, there's, there's a shorted pin and the cable health is zero. So the, the cable tester knows something is wrong with the cable. We cannot transmit any data. We cannot use it for charging. And if we take a look, we can still see that the cable itself advertises itself as a USB 4 cable, and it advertises itself as being fully compatible with 5 to 48 volts, or 50 nominally, and 0 0.5 to 5 amps of current. But the cable is not fully connected. So it's, it tells us that some pins are connected, so something is connected inside. But if we take a look um, at the details, we can see that there is a shorted pin somewhere. So it will not tell us which pins are connected and it will not fully test the cable because it is shorted. What we can see is that there is a VBUS resistance. That's because one of the, the pins connected in here is, is just the, the power pin. 
but due to the fact that it is at 178 milliohms, which is quite a lot, it can actually tell us that something is wrong inside the cable. And again, like the power C tester, it can read the E marker because the E marker is in the connector and not in the cable. So it, it reads out the same data, the same vendor ID, the same voltages and currents and, and um, standards. It, it says it's the USB 4 Gen 3's cable instead of the, the Thunderbolt cable, but it's basically the same information coming along. So with this in mind, we now know that for testing cables, uh, using a dedicated cable tester oftentimes is better than using one of those universal testers, with the downsides of the cable tester actually only testing cables and, and not chargers, not anything else. Now that we know, if you have any questions, just, just let me know, put them in the comments below and we'll see each other next time.